Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Walsh. In this short video, what we're going to do is really two things. One is we're going to just basically name the female hormones involved in the female hormone cycle, where they're produced, and a little bit about what they do. And the second part is going to actually go through the female hormone cycle step by step so that you can see all the different sequence of events that takes place in order to have a normal female hormone cycle. Then in a different video, we'll talk about the different defects that can take place once you know the basics found in this video. So here's just some basic things to understand. The female hormone cycle really begins up in the brain. Now in the brain you have a structure called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus receives information from the immune system, the nervous system, and from hormones in the body, and takes all that information and based on the, that input releases something called gonadotropin releasing hormone. Gonadotropin releasing hormone goes to the hypothalamus's neighbor, something else in your brain called the pituitary gland. Now the pituitary gland makes two hormones regarding the female hormone cycle. In the first half of the month, the pituitary gland makes something called FSH, or follicle stimulating hormone. FSH then tells the ovaries basically to make estrogen. So the first half of the month is pro mostly predominant by FSH, uh, follicle stimulating hormone, and estrogen production. Then in the second half of the month, when ovulation is taking place, the pituitary also makes another hormone called luteinizing hormone, or LH. LH tells the ovaries then to make progesterone. So the first half of the month is mostly estrogen and FSH. The second half of the month is mostly LH and progesterone. Now that you have a basic understanding of what these hormones are, where they're made, and a little bit about what they do, let's look at the female hormone cycle in a little bit more detail. Okay, so now that we have some of the names of these hormones, let's take a look about how the female hormone cycle works. Now, I'll be honest, this is a little bit technical, uh, but that's the beauty of videos, is you can watch this over as many times as you want. Hopefully this will help you. I, I am always uh, amazed at how many women actually know very little about the female hormone cycle that's happening in their body for a large part of their life, and nobody ever really explains this to them. So first of all, there's a little legend over here. FSH is a uh, dashed green line. Uh, LH, or luteinizing hormone, is a dashed blue line. Estrogen or estradiol is a solid green line and progesterone is indicated by a solid red line. Now this is an average 28 day female hormone cycle with mid cycle being around uh, day 14. Okay, so here's what happens. Let's actually start at the end. Understand that this entire process is designed to help prepare for pregnancy every single month. If pregnancy does not occur, notice that down here, all the hormones are low. They should have been low, cleared out of the body, and no longer present. Now remember, the pituitary gland senses the amount of hormones in the body and senses this low amount of all hormones. So the first part of the month, the very first thing that happens, and by the way, day zero is the first day of bleeding. So your first day of bleeding during your menstrual cycle, FSH, this dotted green line, starts to be made by your pituitary gland. Now, if you remember from the previous part of this video, FSH is associated with the ovaries making estrogen, and here's why. FSH stands for follicle stimulating hormone. At the beginning of every month, you have a number of eggs or follicles that will start to mature towards being ovulated and deposited into the fallopian tube and for the possibility of pregnancy. At, under the influence of FSH, or follicle stimulating hormone, these follicles start to mature, and notice that they do mature. They get more and more cellular material around them, and these follicles are actually what's making estrogen. So under the influence of pituitary FSH, the follicles in your ovaries start to mature. When they start to mature, they start making estrogen. So what you see is a progressive increase in the dotted green line, which is FSH, and an associated progressive increase in the solid green line, which is estrogen. The first half of the month is called the follicular phase. It's an estrogen dominant portion of the month. And what it's characterized by is increasingly maturing follicles, which are making more and more estrogen. Now, when estrogen reaches its highest amount, what that's doing is the follicle is telling the body, I am as mature as I'm going to be. I am ready to be ovulated and released from the ovary into the fallopian tube. So then what happens is this peak of estrogen, suggesting that the, uh, the follicle is completely mature, the pituitary gland in the brain picks up this level of estrogen and releases in a surge form this uh, dashed blue line, which is luteinizing hormone. Now luteinizing hormone stimulates this now mature follicle to release the ovum, which will now go into the fallopian tubes, and then the cellular material, what's left over, forms what's called the corpus luteum. Hence, the second half of the phase of the monthly cycle is called the luteal phase. 
Now, if you notice, estrogen, was, it peaked, which stimulated luteinizing hormone to, to do its surge, to release the now mature follicle or ovum into the fallopian tubes. And what's left over, this corpus luteum, actually makes progesterone. So the second half of the month, now that the follicle is matured and most of this material is now changing, estrogen tends to drop off towards the second half of the month, but progesterone ends up being very, very high. So the first half of the month is estrogen dominant. The second half of the month is progesterone dominant. The progesterone is coming from what was left over from this maturing egg or follicle, and now it's called the corpus luteum, makes progesterone, but if pregnancy doesn't occur, it ends up shriveling away, which makes less and less progesterone. And as you can see, again, at the end of the month, if the corpus luteum has degenerated, which it's supposed to, if pregnancy doesn't occur, there are no more hormones at the end of the month. Low progesterone, low luteinizing hormone, low FSH, and low estrogen. If that occurs, the pituitary again picks that up. Because pregnancy didn't occur, the uterine lining, which was now thick and vascularized and ready for pregnancy, wasn't needed, so it gets sloughed off. The pituitary picks up the low hormones and again releases FSH to help mature a new set of eggs or follicles for maturation, for ovulation, and then they, as they mature, start to make more estrogen. Estrogen peaks, stimulates the, tells the body that it's ready for ovulation, tells the pituitary, which then releases a surge of luteinizing hormone, which causes ovulation, which causes the cellular material to, to change into the corpus luteum, which makes progesterone, preparing for pregnancy, which if it doesn't happen, the corpus luteum shrivels up, disintegrates, everything drops off and the cycle happens again. So that's the basics of the female hormone cycle. There's a few other things that are involved with this. For example, the, uh, the maturing follicle can make too much testosterone and that might be seen in something like PCOS, but this is just the, the basics that can take place. Now in the other video, we'll talk a little bit about some of the defects that can take place knowing this particular cycle. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks so much.